Hello and welcome to my channel on the hook crochet where we talk about wearable crochet style and let's find out what's been on the hook. Well I've had several things on the hook this week so I want to show you what they are and later on in the program we'll have a video from Jo with her new project bags. I'll put that right at the very end so you can find it if you're looking for it and also I want to show you some happy mail that I've received, some acquisitions that I've bought, and uh, a new pattern coming up next week. So I wanted to tell you about that. Also, last week I released the Weekender on Monday, and there was such a wonderful response. I appreciate it so very much. I hope you're enjoying making your Weekender or finding that special yarn that you're going to use to make it. I'm excited to make it again. I haven't done that yet. I've got several things on the hook that have to go before that, but I hope to see some pictures of yours. If you make it out of something uh, unusual or beautiful or just send me a picture of how you've made it. I would love to see that. I would just love to see that. So thank you all for that. Also this afternoon, I'm sending out, I may have already gone out, this uh, it's the same email I sent Monday. Some people said that my picture was upside down. Some people said that they didn't receive it. And so I'm sending it out again today. If you've already received it, you can just delete that. I'm not here to gung up your uh, inbox with a bunch of emails, but I did want to resend that in case you missed it. So I'm sending that out today. So be looking for that. If you need that offer code, you can use it on any pattern in my Etsy shop. So feel free to do that. The last day to use it is this Saturday, I believe till midnight. So be sure you use it by then. If you're going to purchase a pattern, be sure to use that special offer code. So go down in the description box and sign up for the community. If you haven't already done that, when you sign up, you'll receive a special free pattern called the Hug Me Cow. You can use it for Christmas gifts. You can make yourself a cow for fall and for winter. And I love it. I've got a couple of Hug Me Cows that I've made and it's a very easy pattern to make. So that will come out to you as soon as you sign up for the community. That is not the same as being a subscriber. That's different. I'd like for you to subscribe to this channel as well, but that's the little button down here in the corner. You can join the community by going into the description box down below the video and there's a link there that you can click on. It's very easy and it's free. Don't forget you get that free pattern. So be sure to take care of that today if you haven't already done that. Some happy mail that I received just very quickly from Alice in the UK. Alice sent me this beautiful card and also a little package with some patterns from the UK. And all of these are uh, from the UK. There's some beautiful patterns in here for uh, shawls and sweaters and there's an afghan pattern in here made of straw of triangles it's really pretty i like that and thank you alice so much for sending that along i know that you had trouble getting it here and i appreciate you sending that so thank you alice for that beautiful happy mail not to forget alice sent me also some beautiful things with those patterns and let me just show these to you real quick this is a little crocheted flower that she sent with a pin on the back. So you can pin that to a hat or a cow or a sweater. You can pin that to anything you want. Here's a bigger one. This is um, a red, beautiful red flower with some it's kind of neat um, yarn she used there. Some kind of a eyelash yarn that is uh, the middle is done with. So that's really pretty, Alice. Thank you for that. And also a red, white, and blue flower. I might find my way to my sweater on um, a holiday. Actually, today is a holiday. Um, segue into that. It's Columbus Day today. Today is Monday, October 11, and we celebrate Columbus Day. Not every state does that, and not every country does that, but the Italian Americans in America uh, have a very strong uh, affinity for Com Columbus. He was from um, he was from Spain and he sailed over here. We don't think he actually made it to the continental United States, but he was one of the first, if not the first, to land in the uh, islands off the coast. And so we give him a little credit for that. We have a Columbus Day holiday. So happy Columbus Day. Now let's get into the crochet portion of my show. I am wearing the summertime cardi that I made earlier in the summer really love this. I made it with flex yarn. This is flex yarn from Michael's Loops and Threads. It's $10 a ball. It's a huge ball though. It has 
a lot of yardage on it. This is a size four yarn. It is a uh, composition of acrylic and polyester, 79 to 21. So I don't know what the difference is. Acrylic and polyester, um, there's no cotton or anything in it, but it does hang very nicely. I like the way it hangs and it's very cool and comfortable. The colorway is ivory and again, it's flex. 590 yards on the ball. Now I'm not sure if they still carry this or not at Michael's, but if they do, it's a great um, item to pick up. Just a couple of balls will make a nice cardigan or sweater and you'll have it if you can find it on sale. It, I, I bought that for probably half price. I think it was four or five ninety nine. And so for $10, I made a cardigan and also designed a pattern. So this is the summertime cardi. You've seen this before. This was on my um, summer releases earlier in the summer. I really like it. I've worn it quite a few times. What I usually do is I wear it with a tank top underneath because it can be getting, it can get warm, excuse me, it can get warm, so I usually wear it with a tank, but this is fall, so I'm wearing it with a white collared shirt, long sleeves, so I still have the short sleeves in the cardi, and I'll stand up and model this for you. because. So I'm stepping out here so you can see how long this cardigan is. It is below my hips right here. I'll turn around and let you see the back. This is what... Um, I made earlier in the summer. I really like the length of it. Um, this gives you a very good look. It's a long look and it also has short sleeves in it. So like I said, you can wear it with a tank and still have your arms covered. Um, it's a lightweight cardigan. You can make it probably out of a DK and it would look great in a DK. So I wanted to show this to you because I'm going to show you another version of this. I uh, created with Malabrigo yarn, one of my favorite yarns in the world. So I'm going to change into that and I will wear that for the rest of my show. Now here is my summertime cardi made with Malabrigo yarn. I want to show you the length of this. It is not as long as the other. It is about mid hip. I shortened it quite a bit. Probably, I think it was four inches. I measured it early on when I was making this. I made it four inches shorter in the length. I also did not put sleeves in. Now, in a few videos back, I did tell you that I was going to put sleeves in this, but I put one sleeve in and I just didn't like it. I wanted it to be a vest, like a cardi vest so that I could wear long sleeves with. I really liked it. I wanted to wear it that way, so I ripped the sleeve off and I put an edging around the, the uh, armhole and it turned out very nicely. I really like it. Now, I also changed the trim around the cardigan. This is a window trim and I'll get up a little bit closer in a second and I'll show it to you. The cardigan, the summertime cardi that I made has a trim made with tre treble crochet. That's a where you wind the, the hook twice before you insert it into the stitch. So it's got a treble crochet uh, trim on it with an, a trim on the outside of that. So it has a whole different look from this. I also use that trim on the summertime cardi around the sleeves and also around the bottom. So it's it has the trim all around. So I thought I would mirror that with the Malabrigo vest and let me show you what it looks like up close. Okay, here is the Malabrigo uh, cardi vest. Basically, it's a summertime cardi made with Malabrigo yarn. I'll get up closer so you can see it. I have my hand behind it. It's a um, a very comfortable yarn. I love Malabrigo. Probably my favorite yarn uh, of all the yarns that I work with. I really like it. It's smooth. It has great stitch definition and it really looked nice with this edging. Now this is an edging that I'm just going to tell you how I did it because uh, the, the cardigan is basically the summertime cardi and if you order this pattern you'll have all the directions on how to make it. But I wanted to show you how I did the uh, back and the two fronts differently from the pattern and I just changed out the trim around the bottom and the front. So when I started the back, for example, this is the front I'll show you, but when I started the back, I did a row of, of course I chained up as directed in the pattern and then I did a row of double crochet, a row of window crochet, which is a double crochet skip one chain one. If you've been crocheting for any length of time, you'll know what that means. But this is a window 
uh, window row and then the next row is double and then a window row and then I proceeded with the double crochet to finish the back or the front. I did that all around the bottom and then after I sewed the shoulders together and the underarm seam around the armhole I added two rows of double crochet no trim like this. I didn't do that around the sleeve. It's too close to this trim and it's not a good design element so I just left that off. I just um, crocheted a couple of rows of double crochet around the armhole, very easy. And then I did the same trim that I did around the bottom, up the front, around the back, and down the front. So uh, it's pretty easy to connect the two. As you can see, I was going this way with the back, and then when I did the, or the front, excuse me, this is the front, but it goes all the way around the back. And then I did the uh, front trim like this. And you can see how it meets up right there at the bottom. The front trim is on the outside of the bottom trim. See how it goes like that? This is the last thing that I did was the trim around the front. And I really like the way it turned out. I really do. Um, it's the basic summertime cardi with no sleeves and a different trim. So you might want to try that yourself. Now, Crystal is here to show you my brand new sweater. I had this as a whip for a long time, probably six months. And I decided to finish it, and when I finished it, I thought, you know, I should really write the pattern for that because it's not like anything I've made before. So this is called Winterberry, and this is the introduction of Winterberry. It is finished, and Crystal is modeling it today because I wanted to model my new Malabrigo summertime cardi. So <laughs> I wanted to model this, but she wanted to model this, so I let her wear this. This is a, uh, what I consider a very easy pattern, but it has some interesting design elements on it. If you notice, it has a black trim around the top. Now these are two colors that I used in Beautiful You, and Beautiful You is a line brand product. It's a size two yarn. It is all acrylic, 100% acrylic. And Zinfandel is the color that I use for the main part of the sweater. Now, they don't carry this anymore. You could probably find it on eBay. I find a lot of my yarns on eBay. If I want to find a yarn that's been discontinued, you can, a lot of times, you can find it on eBay. So you might try that. And then I also used black, the beautiful you, these two colors, Zinfandel and black. And what I did was I had a lot of it. I ordered a lot of it on sale one time from Lion Brand. So I used two strands together of the size two yarn, which made it about a worsted size yarn. So I used a J hook to make the sweater. What I did was I added the black as an accent. I really liked the way it turned out. It goes all the way around the neck and across the shoulder, and then it goes down the sleeve right here. It has a black trim around the bottom of the sleeve. These are bell sleeves. They really look pretty with the black turtleneck. I will model this for you next week on Monday, and that's when I hope to release the pattern. So I will wear it next Monday, and you'll see it's called Winterberry, so be looking for that. Underneath the arm is a black stripe, and let me show you that. There's one on top, of course, and then there's one underneath right here, a black trim around the bottom of the bell sleeve. And then the stripe goes all the way down the side and down to the bottom where there's a uh, rather substantial band down here in a different uh, stitch pattern at the bottom. So it has a little bit of interest with the different colors, but I like the way it fits. I put a little bit of ease in here, probably about maybe six inches of ease, and it was just right because when I came up under the arm, it turned out just fine where I broke for the arm. Now these sleeves are crocheted right into the fabric. They are not sewn on. All the seams you have will be this top seam here, and the one under the arm. You will not have to seam up anything else. So I like the way that turned out. I really do. You don't have to seam a sleeve onto it is what I was trying to say. <laughs> you don't have to seam a sleeve onto it. It's already crocheted into the blouse. So um, I would say that you could make this from a worsted yarn or you could make it from a DK yarn. And in a minute, I will show you another version of this particular sweater. For now, this is the one I'll be wearing next Monday. I really like it. It's, um, I always say that because I try to make things very easy to make. I try not to make very complicated patterns, but when you add a design element 
that really sets off the pattern. I think that that matters a lot and it doesn't have to be a difficult uh, stitch pattern or anything like that. It can just be a design element that you use with color. So I used color A and color B. Um, if you want more contrast, you could certainly have that. Um, I didn't want a lot of contrast. I wanted this to look like a fall sweater. So I'm calling it Winterberry and I, I really love the color. It's a kind of a burgundy color with a black accent. So I hope you like that. I'll wear that next Monday so you can look for me in this outfit on Monday. Now moving along, I had to move my camera a little bit. It fell off of my stand <laughs> while I was talking. So I'm, I'm back with probably a different angle. I think it probably is a different angle. Um, Melody, thank you for your thank you note. Very sweet. Melody from Illinois. I appreciate that. I did get it. I read it. It's a very nice sentiment inside. Now, moving along to acquisitions. Yesterday was National Yarn Day. That was Sunday, October 10. And um, I knew it was coming, but I couldn't record a video yesterday. So I'm wishing you a National Yarn Day, or it's I Love Yarn Day. I've seen other people call it that. I Love Yarn Day. In honor of that, I have bought some yarn. And this may have to wait until spring. I don't know. But I went on the Eat Sleep Knit site. It's eatsleepknit.com, not sponsored at all <laughs> by any stretch. But I do love that site. It's actually a brick and mortar yarn shop in Dallas, Georgia. And if you're ever going through Dallas, Georgia, you should stop in and see what they have. And I will do the same. I don't know where it is in Georgia, but the next time I travel to Florida, I might try to make a side uh, trip to Eat Sleep Knit. And I saw a picture of it. It says, it's just a brick and mortar place. It's an actual shop. So I'm kind of glad. I thought it was just an online shop. So I learned something new yesterday. I had gone on there to look at the sale items. Sometimes I flip to the, the sale button and I think, you know, if there's something on sale that I might like to have, I'm just going to go ahead and buy it. So I went on the sale site and Mrs. Crosby was having a sale on her carpet bag yarns. Carpet bag is a line of Mrs. Crosby yarns that has been discontinued. The, the maker, the yarn dyer, has decided to move on and do something different, so they are discontinuing Mrs. Crosby yarns. Mrs. Crosby yarns are really super nice. They are a step up from, I think, a step up from Malabrigo. Very, very beautiful, and these are 80% superwash wool, merino wool, 20% silk. A gorgeous yarn, and I think this was $16. I would probably never, never have bought it full price, but I did buy some of these on sale and I felt like it was a really good deal. So here are the four skeins that I bought. These are called, um, the, the color is Toucan, which is Toucan or Toucan. That's a bird that is, um, I think it's a, a South American bird, my guess. Um, but these are the colors in that bird. I've seen the bird, it has a long kind of a yellow bill and very, very pretty. And this is the, the yarn that, they, that she dyed to match the colors in the bird. So isn't that gorgeous? That will be a sweater maybe for early spring. That's probably where this will go. I think this is actually DK. It doesn't say, but they're 240 yards on the hank. So I'm guessing this is DK. I am. It's, it's about the size of a DK yarn. See, it's not tiny like a number two, but it's also not wide like worsted. So this may have to go for something else. I have some other green yarn there that I might be able to mix in with this if I want to put a stripe on the sweater. And I was, um, in my back of my mind, I was going to make a winterberry, as I just showed you, with this and then use a solid color for the stripe, you know, and make the sweater out of a more um, vibrant color like this. So that may be where I go with that. I also may put a black uh, stripe on it. I don't know. It'll probably be a light color because it'll be for spring. But I did buy a hank of black worsted, not washed, but worsted. <laughs> it's always good to have some black for accent colors in your uh, yarn stash. I try to have some cheaper black, um, like Super Saver, something that I can use for an accent color, uh, if I just want to add a little black to something. And I thought, you know, while this is out there, I'll just buy a hank of worsted. And if I need 
something in wool, then I will have black wool. The Super Saver, of course, is not wool, it's uh, acrylic. So I bought that. You can't see it too well, but it's just a solid black worsted. Well, now let me show you what else I bought there. Hanging out in my bumblebee bag. This is a bag that Joe for totes made me, or Joe, to Joe, <laughs> my friend Joe, made me. And it has a really nice pocket. It has a pocket in here, but it's split in two and a smaller size, a larger size on the other side. And they're clear so I can see what's in there. I don't have to push my hand down there too far. I can just look in there and see where my crochet hook is and everything else. On the other side, she has two regular pockets. I don't know if you can see that. Two regular pockets that I have things stuck down in. I usually stick my yarn balls in there. And there's another Mrs. Crosby that'll give you an idea of what's in this bag. I ordered four hanks of another um, colorway of Mrs. Crosby's carpet bag wool. And this is wool and silk, like I said before, the 240 yards on the hank. This is the color pansy, and it, this is the label. This is what it looks like, Mrs. Crosby. Um, this is called pansy. Look at that. Isn't she beautiful? This is a beautiful um, mix of lavender and purple together with a kind of a light, very light lavender in there as well. It's almost white, but not really. It's, it's more, it's got a little bit of the lavender color in the, the third color that's in here. And this is what it looks like on the hank. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Look at that. I couldn't resist. And they had 17 skeins of this, so I ordered four. Um, some of their on-sale yarns only have like one hank. If you go on their website and, and you see a yarn that you like, it'll show you all the colors that the yarn comes in. Click that in stock only. There's a tab right there. And that'll give you an idea of what's in stock. So you don't go, oh, I'd like to have this color. And you go to put it in your cart and, it's at, and then they're out of stock. So click the in stock only tab. And then you can see all the yarns that are in stock. Well. A lot of yarns were in stock on the sale site, but there was only one or two hanks left of them. So Pansy had quite a few. I don't know why, because it's so gorgeous purple, but purple's not for everyone. So I ordered four of these and I, I just couldn't resist. And then I ordered the solid color to go with it. And this is called Midnight Aubergine. And this is the Mrs. Crosby carpet bag. Again, there's the label. And there is the beautiful, beautiful yarn. Look at that. And I'm going to use this. My plan is, and I've already started this, is to make another winterberry in a lighter yarn. It's a lighter color yarn. And this is what I've done so far. This is what it looks like crocheted. Excuse my chair noise there. This is what it looks like crocheted. It's a beautiful, beautiful yarn. Look at that. I love the way it looks when I crochet it. And what I'll do is I will uh, use this purple for the stripe that goes from the neck, you know, all the way down the sleeve and underneath the arm and around the bottom. So that should work out really nicely. So that's what it's going to look like. Really love this yarn. I really do. I'm so glad that I ordered it and it was on sale. It's discontinued. So you could find it now if you wanted to buy it now, but if you don't, I totally get it, but I have four hanks of that beautiful pansy and a hank of this um, I've already balled it up, so it's the dark aubergine and the same yarn, just in a different color. So that is a major acquisition there, and also the toucan is a very major acquisition sweater quantities. Now, a preview of a pattern coming up in the next few weeks. I don't know when I'll have it out. But this is going to be called Touch of Granny. And I'm telling you, I don't like granny squares. But I decided to use a motif. And this is not done in triads like a regular granny square. But this is done in, um, it, it's done in just plain double crochet. Very easy to do. I'm making a two-tone motif. And I'm going to use this and incorporate it into a sweater. So I wanted to show you that. This is... The yarn is Heartland yarn in olive, and then just some black that I had in my stash. The center round is done in black, and then the last two rounds are done in olive. 
And it's a very simple square. See, it's a very simple square. Don't pay any attention to that. Let me turn this around. <laughs> I could show you the right side. This is the right side. And that's what it looks like. It's a very beautiful color combination. I love olive. One of my favorite colors next to chartreuse, which you know where I'm going with that. Green, green, green. I love green. A light green. I'm partial to green. Uh, here I am wearing purple and making something purple, but green is kind of my first love. So when I saw this on the Lion Brand site in Olive, this Heartland, I just had to have it. I wanted to make a sweater from it. So I'm designing a sweater with some motifs on them. So I know y'all like that. A lot of you like granny squares, but this is just a touch of a granny. It's not the triad granny that everybody makes. This is a little bit different. So I'll, of course, put the directions in there for this particular motif is what I call the motifs and then how to make the sweater. I've already got it designed. I'm really excited. I'm working on it now. So, well, I have several whips in progress, of course, as you know, but uh, this is one of my primary projects right now. I have this going and I'm excited about it. It's going to be called Touch of Granny, so stay tuned for that. Now, I hope you enjoyed that portion of my program that's all about crochet. I'm just excited about wearables. That is the focus of my channel is wearable crochet style so if you're looking for something to make to wear i have summer and winter and fall all those tops on my etsy shop you can find it at the link below if you're looking for a crochet pattern that is easy and written in conversational style you can check out my etsy shop because i have lots and lots of patterns down there that you can uh, make a uh, a stole you can make a poncho you can make a um, a hat. I have a hat pattern out there. Um, it's not a beanie pattern. It is a, a little bit fancier pattern and um, you might take a look at that if you're looking for a hat pattern. I'm hoping to come out with, well, I actually have three or four hat patterns. What am I saying? I have a, um, a snood pattern that I've shown pictures of before. It's a, a snood and a cowl together made with bulky yarn so it just takes a second to make very very easy to make and the directions are very easy to understand they're not all cryptic in only abbreviations i try to write out and explain everything in my patterns and i have so much feedback from y'all saying you appreciate that because who has time to try to figure out a pattern do it wrong and then rip it all out try to figure out what the designer was uh, intending I try to tell you what I'm intending in words so that you'll understand what I'm talking about. And I do it in two or three different ways usually so that you can understand it. It's those who understand it this way or that way. I, I get very few questions about my patterns because I try to be very, very clear when I write them. So uh, go out and check those out. They're on the Etsy shop. And if you're in the community, you can get an offer code when I release a new pattern, which will be next Monday. You'll also get an offer code with your actual community join up so that you'll get a free pattern and the offer code that you can use anytime. And then you get a special offer code when I release a pattern. So you'll be on that email list if you're on in the community. So be sure to sign up at the link below. Now for the giveaway portion of my program, I have a crochet magazine that we're giving away this week. So if you use the word snuggle in your comment, last Monday. This is the first giveaway. It's the crochet magazine and lots of beautiful things in here. And here is the the project page. This is what is in the magazine. In case you're looking to buy one, this is a really good crochet magazine. It's not Crochet World, which is also very, very good. You can find this magazine at crochetmagazine.com. They also have it at Joann's and Michael's, places like that. You can pick it up. This is the newest version. This is the edition for winter of 2021. Here we are at the computer and the URL from last Monday is there where I introduced the Weekender. That's that URL right there. And snuggle is the comment word that I was looking for. So let's find out how many comments we had with that word in the comment. So that would be 177. So let's go over here and find out who wins the crochet magazine for this week, and this month actually, is Teresa Anderson. Teresa, you have won the crochet magazine, and there's her word snuggle right there. So Teresa, you have won the crochet magazine. Congratulations. Our next giveaway gift this week 
is the Crochet Surprise box. And this comes every month from Crochet Surprise. They send me a free box and I give it away to one of my subscribers. And I like to show you what's inside. And that's one thing they wanted me to do, to show y'all what's inside one of these boxes. You can order a monthly subscription. And if you go down to the description box, it will show you how to get a discount on your first box. So if you're interested in that, it's a crochet uh, project every single month. They're all different. You can get a wearable, you can get pillows, you can get uh, pot holders, you can get a rug. I've seen lots of things come through. A lot of things I'd like to make. And I really like these um, crochet surprise. I had it for over a year before they even asked me to um, take one and give it away to one of my subscribers. So I'm just really uh, excited that they uh, trust me with their brand. So another thing that's in the box is always a tea. And this is vanilla Ruibos. This is a very nice tea, I'm sure, from Jasmine Pearl. Love these teas. And they put one of these in every box. So you always can get a loose tea in the box. That's very, very nice. Now in this box, we are using this yarn. It's lemonade, red, and black. They're all Karen Simply Soft. Very nice yarns, and uh, these are 100% acrylic. So there is the lemonade color, and that's the main color we're using for this box. This box is the emojis box. And when I showed this, I had a lot of people ask me, they wanted to win this. This is uh, two emoji pillows that you crochet, and they're 14 inches in diameter. So very, very cute, very cute. Uh, you can put those on your couch or you give them to your kids. They can put them in their chair in their room or however they want to use them. But those are really cute. I do like those. Those are cute. So I wanted to show you that and open the box, show you what was in it. And then we will move over to the computer and find out who wins this. So if you use the word emoji in your comment, then you will be uh, in the running for this gift. So let's take a look and see who wins it. Here we are again at the computer, last week's URL right there, the word emoji right there. So let's find out how many comments we had with that word. And that'd be 178. So 178 people are signed up for this giveaway. So let's find out who wins the emoji pillows. Wyoming Whips. Wyoming Whips. <laughs> You are the winner of the Crochet Surprise Box. And there's the word emojis right there. So you are, you are the winner of the Crochet Surprise Box. Congratulations. Now for next week's giveaway, I'm giving away all my beautiful You yarn that I have left. You know, I made the Winterberry, so I don't need any more yarn and beautiful You. I'm moving on to some different yarns. So what I'd like to do is give away what I have. I ordered all kinds of colors. And I used up the Zinfandel on the Winterberry. But I do have three unopened skeins of Pumice Stone, which is the gray color Beautiful You. This is Beautiful You yarn, still in the package. There are three skeins there. And on each skein is uh, 326 yards. It's a number two yarn. You can mix this with mohair. You can mix it with anything you want, another acrylic yarn or you can just use it as it is. It's a beautiful, beautiful yarn made up. I love Beautiful You. I've made other things from it and I'm moving on. So I'm going to give this away to a winner for next week. This is Pumice Stone, three skeins of Pumice Stone. In addition to that, for another winner, I'm giving away four skeins of Beautiful You and this is Arrowwood. This is the color that is so gorgeous. I really should have made this one up, but I didn't make it. I needed to move on. So that's one of the four skeins that I'll be giving away. Here are the four skeins to winner number two next week. So be sure you sign up for this. I'll tell you in a minute how to do that. So four skeins of Arrowwood Beautiful You, four, three skeins of, of the Pumice Stone, and four skeins of this uh, beautiful you in the colorway. Let me find the colorway on here. It is Spanish Villa. And I started a project with this. Y'all might remember from one of my videos. I don't remember where it was. But there are three skeins there still in the plastic right there. And one skein that I had started a sweater with. I think there are five skeins of this. I can't be sure. I'm pretty sure though because this is a full skein right here. And I've already used up 
uh, some of one here. So anyway, this whole thing will go to giveaway winner number three next week. Be sure to go down in the comment section and sign up by using the word beautiful, B-E-A-U-T-I-F-U-L. So word, the word beautiful will get you in the running for one of those three giveaways for Beautiful You Yarn next week. Now our next video is Joe for Totes and this is uh, Jo Grant. She is a wonderful seamstress. She makes the most beautiful project bags in the world for crocheters and knitters and embroiders too. You can put anything you want in her bags but they're just really designed for crochet and knitters. I just really love her bags. I have another one too that I wanted to show you. I, I've shown this before, but I want to show it again because this is one that she made for me and she doesn't make these anymore <laughs> So you can't have one, but I wanted to show you her um, sewing ability. This is a zippered top bag with beautiful beautiful fabric. I'm keeping my touch of granny in here and The bottom has that fabric on it as well. The sides are all open. See they're all see-through. This is my favorite kind of bag. <laughs> the handles are stitched in a special stitch and they're padded. Very, very nice. I really like this. There are no inside pockets. It doesn't need any. You can see everything in there. See that Heartland yarn in there? That's my project, Touch of Granny. So uh, there are my notes and I just wanted to show you that this is what's living in my beautiful red see-through bag that Joe made me. So I want to show you a video from Jo. She has two more beautiful new bags that she's made this week and is getting ready to send those out. So let's take a look at her bags and see what she has to offer this week. Hello, it's Jo with Jo for Totes and today I'm going to show you two bags that are very similar but there are some differences. There's one major difference and one thing that I've not ever done before on a bag that I want to show you on this first one, which goes to Debbie who lives in Surprise, Arizona. Now you might be surprised to know that I've been to Surprise, Arizona. I had a good friend that lived in Phoenix and I went to visit her and we went down to a craft fair that was in Surprise. This was years and years ago. <laughs> anyway, uh, Debbie's favorite colors are orange with some blue and purple. So I did coordinate the purple with the orange and I just think it turned out beautiful. I don't know if you remember uh, the last video I did for Jeannie had a purple and orange bag in it too but they were flowers and uh, that was a really big bag. This is the 11 by 11 so this is the original size and the most size that I make uh, for most people. And so let me show you the medallion. I hope that you can see that. Turned out very pretty. This is the zipper pull, and I've run out of the, the gold tone lobster clasp, so I've got to go buy some tomorrow and replace what I'm going to show you in the other bag in this one, too, before I put them in the mail. But anyway, it has a little bell on it. <laughs> like I've said before, she might want to take that off. It might be a little too much. She's got two side pockets and the front pocket, of course, and then um, her handle has a little orange stitch on it and it's purple and the bottom is purple too but this is where the difference is the bottom has four feet on it <laughs> she wanted feet so um, I don't know if you can hear that but on my computer um, they will keep off some of the the dirt on the bottom of the bag but since it's a dark color it won't be that bad anyway now on the inside and of course there's a zipper top that she asked for with a purple zipper and she has a granddaughter that's initials are B-E-E -E, and so she asked me if there was something I could do on her bag that would have B in it and I looked everywhere for B fabric that was orange and I couldn't find it. I can find a lot of yellow and gold and black of course but but not the orange so I put some on the inside. So this is what she wanted on the inside. She wanted four hook sleeves and a pocket and I put that in B fabric and then on the other side she has a zipper and on the inside of that I also put the B fabric so I think she'll really like it just a little touch that she'll just know about and that's special for her for her granddaughter and here is the um, the charm that I put on the inside of that pull and then of course um, her tab for her stitch markers and she asked me for another tab 
So that was really easy just to put another tab in there for her. So this one goes out to Debbie as soon as I get those little gold tone lobster claws. Now this other bag goes to Allison and uh, Allison lives in Louisville, Kentucky, uh, where I've also been. <laughs> Because in my former job, I traveled a lot, so I got around. I went, actually, I've been, I visited every state except for South Dakota. Went to North Dakota, but never made it to South Dakota. But anyway, I don't know if you remember when I had a giveaway that I was at Jeannie's house to show for all of the viewers. I think it was 10,000, 5,000, I can't remember. Anyway, she had a lot of viewers she was celebrating, so I did a bag giveaway, and um Allison saw this bag and she wanted one just like it. And let me tell you, it was not easy to find this fabric, <laughs> but I did. And I don't think I can, you can find it anymore. So just enjoy looking at this bag because this will be the last time I'm able to make a bag like this. This is her uh, little medallion. And um, she wanted also two side pockets. She has a black bottom and she wanted the woven. It's a belting type woven handle that I had made on the giveaway bag. And I put a combination of decorative stitches on the handle that coordinate with the colors of the bag, which are beautiful. I love this bag. I'm going to have a hard time milling this bag off because I just love these colors. Usually I'm really fond of jewel tones, and I do like jewel tones, but uh, this bag just grabbed me. I just love it. Uh, on the inside, she has a zipper pocket that has the fabric that matches the outside of the side pockets, as you can see. And then on the other side, um, she has a, um, a pocket or yeah, a little pocket that's got two uh, crochet hook sleeves in the middle of it. And you can see right here. And then I just kind of made that a little fancy with two different colors. And then she has her stitch marker. And this is her charm for her outside pull. And then for the inside pull, it's green and pink beads i think you can see that pretty well so it's a it's a fairly simple bag it's got a top zipper in this lime or chartreuse i'm not sure which color green you would call that but i went ahead and put a um, a different color zipper pull on that to kind of coordinate with the bag but i really like that those uh, charms on that zipper pull and i really like this woven handle makes it really really easy so those are the two bags that i've done this week and um, I'm getting ready to start on some more. I, in a couple of weeks, I'm probably going to make an announcement that I'm not going to take any additional orders than the ones I already have. So if you're seeing bags and you've been wanting to be on the list, I will go ahead and put people on the list. It'll be a while before I get to anybody that goes on the list now. But um, I'm probably just going to back off completely from bags after I've got everybody on the list taken care of. Uh, I might go ahead and continue making bags that maybe will be on an Etsy shop somewhere. Jeannie's offered to let me put some bags on her Etsy shop. So I might do that, but um, I think that's what I'm going to do. So anyway, until I see you next time, this is Joe with Joe for Totes. Have a great day. Thank you, Joe, for showing those bags. We appreciate your videos so much. Everybody looks forward to those. And I'm so glad that you send those to me so people can see how beautiful your project bags are. Now, if you want to start a conversation with Joe, her name and email is down in the description box. And I'm not sure if she's taking orders or not. Sometimes in the video she'll say so, and then people still send her information. I don't know how that works. So if you're interested in one of her project bags or ordering one, uh, even for someone for Christmas, I'm not sure if she has room now for that, but go ahead and send her an email and let her tell you if she's got room on her waiting list or not for your bag. So uh, I have several of her bags and I feel very fortunate to have those. Thank you, Joe. again, appreciate that video. So now I'm going to leave that right there. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you'll subscribe and please like this video. Hit that thumbs up. That helps me a lot in sending out the video to other people who might be interested in it. So thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful week. And I will see you next time. So join me then to find out what's on the hook. <laughs>